Hello everybody, welcome to the Hack for Future Open Hack 2020 Australia. My name is Hanif Rashidi and I have been working with the Pattern Recognition Research for more than five years for image processing and geographical information system. In the past two years, I have been working with the deep learning research for computer vision and also been helping with the data science course at ENU. For today, I will help you in this class course, how to train your machine, transforming real data into digital knowledge for automatic processing. This short course will help you to understand the basic of data gathering and pre-processing with the aim to prepare the best data to train a machine learning models. I hope you enjoy your time in this video and can implement all the knowledge to support your project. I've been give, giving you step-by-step -step knowledge and then we will end up with live demo with a sample data that I've been preparing. So, okay. So what do we learn here? So there are a lot of machine learning tutorial in the internet and each of them have their own focus on what we will t they will tell a specific part of the machine learning to the, the audience so today we will focus on the data gathering part in which you need to find the data to train your models and then how you process the data so the models, the machine learning models, is actually understand the context of what you will to tell them. So we will talk about the brief intro to machine learning, and then we will show you how to find your data, especially in Australia. And we also look for a different data format and which one is actually better for us to process depending on what our needs with the model. We also will work with the pre-processing to remove the unwanted data and to basically clean the data and transform it into a numerical value that understood by the machine. And then in the end, we will have you a live demo, how to train a model with a simple data. Of course, this is not the real data, but sometimes the the not so real data will have you to give you a big a bigger picture on the overall process. And like I said before, there are a lot of tutorial online out there. So we won't talk about the deep knowledge about machine learning calculation. It's heavily reliant on the mathematics. And yeah, it's not for all the people, but it's good if you want to learn about that one. And of course, there are a lot of machine learning models and you need to find out by yourself for the comparison of each of them, uh, which one will be usable for your project and which one, let's say, will be easier to train with the data that you have. Of course, the implementation of the specific program in a specific language when we touch here. So yes, I'm using Python, but it doesn't mean that all the technique that you will learn today, um, you won't be able to implement it in another programming language. And of course, by the end of this video, you need to find out which data is suitable for your project so you can continue to build your idea based on the available data that useful to train for your machine. Before working deeper into the data processing, we need to know by the start asking a question, what is machine learning? And what people say about this specific name? Yes, machine learning looks cool and that's the point. If you see the idea of machine learning started even on the early 60s, when we don't have a computer yet, and at that time, the world is still in the aftermath of the World War II. 
So during that time, the idea of the computer is still new. And then uh, people start thinking how to do with this computer in the future. So when we talk about machine learning, it's basically it depends on which individuals that talk about it. A certain CEO might say it's the best technological advance in the internet. A sales manager might say machine learning has improved our company revenue by 300% last year. It, it might be true when some company trying to invest more with the usage of the machine learning to know their customer that might be able to run with a good analytical uh, process that to turn out it will improve their revenue. Like I said now, the machine learning is become part of the integral uh, life, especially with the use of the internet and how many cookies we share with the web page and even our phone. Maybe some people will say it's a magical. You don't need to know. Imagine you're just browsing and then out of nowhere there is an ad about a certain product that you think that you want it. Wow, from all the ads in the world, that specific ads is coming to you. Some people might say that due to the idea of giving the computer all the data, in the end, the computer will learn better than us. Maybe they will mm, work better, especially in sorting the data, know your customer, and that's part of the life. That's part of the challenge that we have as the developer to develop the best machine learning product. So depending on what people say, we can't have the expectation of our system. Although as a developer, it's better to start from the tactical point of view which is the machine learning is part of the certain mathematical calculation that we can improve by giving them a good uh, information in the form of the data. And that mathematical calculation will help us to predict a certain pattern in the data or in the future data. So regardless of whoever said about the machine learning as a developer we need to understand that the machine learning is a part of a certain flow chart of the process that when done correctly it will produce a certain prediction or replicate a certain intelligence of the people to that perform a certain task so the machine learning start by the data so we will see a lot of data whether it's from the plain documents or from the database or let's say the table format less like excel or some similar thing the idea with the data is available in the internet and if we manage to process the data correctly we will be able to break down the data in a specific components called the attributes of the data. And when you give the attributes of the data, so the data with a certain attributes to a machine, the machine will try to break down that information into some sort of numbers and they will implement the mathematical formula onto it with a result of prediction, regression, or even clusters. So in this sense, depending on what the data that we have and what information that we want to extract the data, we need to process the data or, or the raw data into a specific format that understood with the machine. In this case, the machine is 
has no knowledge at all. So it's actually not smart. But then what we tell the machine to do with a specific process, it's actually the one that made the machine look smart. So don't worry about it. The learning or machine learning doesn't make you creating a killer robot or doesn't make you creating a system that will take over the world. Yeah, maybe some people already made that or planning to make that one. But at least with the basic of the machine learning, we just want a machine to learn a specific task. And based on what they learn, they might be able to predict whether it's raining or not today based on the uh, weather information or which part of the fire will come in a bushfire case based on earlier this year's case or even they will give a prediction high whether a certain thing is a good or not for us to do and a lot of people already done with that let's say in the stock exchange whether they should buy or sell the stock uh, we can also use machine learning to predict a certain pattern. Let's see right now how the US dollar compares to some other currency. Or even we can use the machine learning to find a specific information that hidden in the plain sight. But when we have the resource of the computational, computational resource to look with it we can find it and we can use it for our um, what's called the decision making let's say in the company so that's basically the machine learning in a nutshell and you can see that during the technology advancement for the past five or maybe ten years the machine learning uh, getting supported by a bigger computer so we will see that the machine learning that start as the uh, something special for a small number of the computer user now in involve evolve to be something that almost anybody can use it. So I can use it, you can use it, so does some other else. To <laughs> the nature of the technology advancement of the year. So the term the machine learning is practically evolved into something new. So when you say it about the data, let's say 10 years ago, the amount of the free data over the internet is nothing compared to now so it's easy to find an open document um, government data or of some free data over the internet so because the number of data getting more than before so there are another term that involve with the machine learning it's also happened with the number of the computational power so the technology the computer technology now is way faster than they used before that's why with the data we have more data and with a resource we have more resource in the end the prediction result is still the same it only gets better over time but then when we look at the overall trend right now you can see that more data will become the trend called the big data. So when you know about the big data analysis, it's basically similar to the machine learning, but it's getting more and more data that are available. And of course, with more data, you will get more noise. So be careful about that one. And of course, there is a term called deep learning. It's basically a technique the improvement of technique that's been here for the late 70. One of the deep learning process is based on the neural network and it's currently one of the, the best state of the art machine learning approach. Although, yeah, some people might say the deep learning is different with the machine learning, but 
technically they are the same. So back in the 70s, the idea, like I said before, the machine learning, some of the mathematical background of machine learning has been there for since 60s. And so this idea of the neural network have been here since the 70s, but then during that time, of course, the computer is no way, nowhere f as fast as right now. So they just uh, face with the limitation on the computational power and they cannot move on. And then after 30 years in the future, and now 40 years in the future, we found out that the technology has been evolved. Uh, to be really better on it and then the old idea that's been there now become the deep learning so when you see a company like a google facebook or even microsoft they move from the traditional machine learning approach which is using the traditional uh, mathematical formula they move it into the deep learning approach and they try to create their own architecture to process more data even when the data is the just pile of garbage data but then with their own uh, computational power and the amount of data that getting updated from our phone from our uh, website access or so on they manage to get the hidden information that are really really hidden from the plan side so even when the human look at it they will know about it but then when they use a deep learning with the big data they arrive to a certain situation when they know a lot of things so that's basically the new state of the art of the internet sorry the machine learning And of course, when you create an application, whether it's a web apps or maybe a mobile apps, the machine learning is just a small part of the overall process. If you create an application, you will have the front end application. Maybe you have to do with the design, with the compatibility of the device or with the user experience. And of course, in the back end, you will find the core programming problem the security, how do you access your data, how do you update it, and then you will find a machine learning in there. And believe it or not that when people say to use a machine learning on our system, it's not necessarily that the, they implement it correctly. Sometimes they just become a gimmick. But currently, with the amount of the data, it's almost... Uh, impossible to not follow the temptation of doing using a machine learning to collect the data that's why every time you open a website right now they will ask you about hi we have the, our new security measurement we will ask about your cookies and by the by the time we click i agree they basically collect some part of our information in the end the end game is they will use that information to train models machine learning models that will be used again to support us whether in their business or for our convenience but yeah in the end the machine learning is just a small part of the overall software development process but it's crucial because they can create uh, what's called the user experience or everything, including the security. They will they can upgrade it using the knowledge that they get from the user. So that's made the system become always learning system in which they will be able to improve based on what the user give the feedback to them intentionally or unintentionally. So now we know that machine learning is basically math with new branding. So yeah, there is always a joke with the machine learning world that it's basically just a combination of metrics, functions, statistics, and linear algebra. 
but then uh, people brand it as the machine learning to make it look cool and it is cool and it is useful to have a new name but in the end when we say that with the machine learning we need to understand that it's a math that means when we use the data to train the model or in this case the machine we need to transform the data from the raw information to extract the important data and of course because this is a mathematical calculation we need to convert the data as a number and after that one by the time we finish that process or what we call the pre-processing we can use the information the number information in our machine learning in our mathematical calculation to have the model learn a specific mathematical pattern and in the end even after the training process finish the model will can understand if we have a new data and then the data what is the possible outcome of the data so that's all about the basic of the machine learning and in the next session we will start with working with what the data processing is and how it's become one of the crucial part of the machine learning